Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, JK Amazie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Gentlemen, today we're going to talk about dating during your reboot. Now, at some point in your reboot, for the single brothers out there, it would probably be helpful to begin dating, but in a healthy way. And I just want to make it clear that having an outlet for your sexual needs, for your romantic and intimate needs, is a very normal and healthy progression if you are a single man going through the reboot process, it is unhealthy to hold your seed, like some men say, and not have any sort of intimacy or connection with women over a long period of time, but feel that you're winning because you're not masturbating or viewing pornography. That's a one-way ticket to sexual repression, which we'll talk about on another podcast episode. Either way, dating in today's world does come with its own challenges, And you might be in a tough situation. You might have no idea how to date. You might have no idea how to have an actual normal conversation with a person of the opposite sex. You might be afraid that dating will lead to a relapse, or you might be worried about having your self-esteem damaged by dating. Don't worry. (laughs) No matter how extreme you think your out-of-control behavior is, there's no reason that you cannot have an amazing and active sexual and dating life. So part of your reboot is actually learning how to date and have sex in a healthy way. We teach this within the porn reboot system. So the first step is actually figuring out if you're ready for dating. And at this point, my recommendation is that a man should have at least six to 12 months of control of his behavior with pornography and masturbation. And during that time, you should have been actively working on yourself, not just using willpower, which means that you should have been working on different areas of your reboot capital. You should have started becoming a lot more aware of your triggers. You should have strong boundaries and you should be quite aware that you're a man who is rebooting. So none of these like periods of one month or two months where you're just like, yeah, I totally forgot I was rebooting or I told myself that, you know, like I'm good to go after two, three months. Now, if you've been working with some recovery coach, if you've been working with a therapist, or if you've had an accountability partner, I would recommend that you approach dating the way you would any major change in your life during your reboot. And this would include putting together a plan for dating. Now, of course, different men's plans are going to vary according to their lifestyle and what they actually want. So I'm just going to share a couple of guidelines and hopefully they help you out. So I want to make it clear that you should always have somebody keeping you accountable while you're putting together this dating plan. And the simple reason is because there's a part of you, your addict self, your addict sub personality, whatever you want to call it, that can easily creep in and bring pornography objectification or some other compulsive aspect of your behavior to the forefront it can use it as an excuse to do so we basically want to avoid any behavior that could be potentially compulsive and an accountability partner or a coach or someone else would be able to point that out if you're headed in that direction now one of these boundaries should involve sex we'll start with that and this simply means that you should ask yourself like where are you finding your potential dates And how often should you actually see them before having sex? And this is very important for a man who is rebooting because you might be thinking like, oh, why shouldn't I have sex right away? Well, early in your reboot, there needs to be space to reflect on the person that you're meeting. You want to reflect on the dynamic of the date before you make any sort of sexual or intimate decisions. And this is, of course, easier said than done. Because dating and relationships can be complex, even for those of us who are not rebooting. So having a mentor, having support network, or having a reboot circle to guide you through the dating process can be very helpful. Without a reboot circle or a support network of some sort, 
it's really not advisable to jump into dating. So over the years, I've had a lot of men who have reached the late stage or the maintenance stage of their reboot who are ready to start dating. And the support of our group has been invaluable to them. It has helped them dodge and walk, <laughs> avoid rather certain, I would call them minefields that could have set their reboot back and caused them to relapse. When I speak of reflecting on your dates and giving yourself some space, what I mean is that as a porn addict, especially one who's rebooting, one of your most likely challenges is going to be developing intimacy. And for this reason, I advise against getting into any sort of a committed romantic relationship early in your reboot. There are quite a few men who are 30 days into their reboot and they immediately start thinking that, oh, you know what? I need to start dating. Or their addict mind pipes up and goes like, oh my God, bro, it's been 55 days and you haven't jerked off. You know what the problem is? You're working all the time. You have no balance. You need some sort of sexual release. Now, I want to make one thing clear. That is perfectly logical and rational for a man who's not struggling with an out-of-control sexual behavior. But that's not the category you fall into, brother. You have to keep reminding yourself that you have to gain control over your behavior. You have to give yourself a chance to build up the proper reboot habits. You have to give your brain a chance to rewire because most of the sexual behavior you're going to get into if you are not in a committed relationship is always going to put you at risk. So if you go out there searching for a long-term partner, a girlfriend or even a wife, just be aware that that approach is going to put a lot of emotional pressure on you. So my recommendation is that when you start dating during your reboot, that you do so without any expectations, none at all. If something happens, it happens. But there is no one person who is quote unquote special enough at this stage for you to lose your emotional balance over. As for sex during your reboots, here are just a few things to keep in mind. The first one is I highly recommend that you have standards with your sexuality. Don't simply have sex because sex is available. During your reboot, take your time and get to know the person. And this might take weeks or it might take months. The next thing to remember is that the dating process is not about sex, nor is it strictly about finding yourself a partner. Now, this might sound counterintuitive, but early in your reboots, the main point of dating is just to go out to literally practice to meet some interesting, fun people, have a good time, and observe how you react emotionally. Because the truth is, you might find out that you're not quite ready for dating. Next is you, you actually want to have standards, not just with your sexuality, but for how you will be treated. And a lot of men do not have this. You know, something interesting that happens once you have control over your sexual behavior, once you're no longer a slave to it, is that you begin to notice how, and I don't mean this in a harsh way, but how uninteresting a lot of women that you previously thought were interesting are. And the reason why I say this is because prior to your reboot, you were seeing everything through a lens of objectification and sexualizing. And thus, you would find a woman to be charming and you would find her to be interesting. You would find her to be very funny when in reality, she was just a hot chick. Now, you're not perfect, but I want to make one thing clear. It's important to avoid people who are toxic, especially women who are toxic. You have to set standards and draw a line. There are things that you will accept and there are things you're just not going to put up with. Avoid anyone who belittles you, anyone who plays too many games with you in an attempt to manipulate you, anyone who does anything shady at all. If you feel like something a woman does is shady or it's weird, dude, just cut them off. You don't need to text your buddies and go like, hey, bro, so this chick did this like super weird thing and this and this and this. If you're not sure, 
don't mess with it at this stage near reboot. And the reason why I'm saying this is that I want you to learn to cut those women off, to be non-attached to them. They are all these guys, typically even guys who are not rebooting, who are so attached to a woman, so invested in simply having sex with her that they will text their friends, they will call their boys, and they will try to find explanations for a woman's weird behavior also that they can justify having sex with them. And they miss so many red flags. You don't have that luxury because anything that impacts you emotionally when it comes to dating relationships, when it comes to dating and meeting women, can put your reboot at risk. So we're basically protecting all the work that you've put into your reboot thus far. And having these sorts of standards makes you a person of high value. So your self-respect and your pride, which is basically lost to your addiction, brother, this is your big priority at this point in your life. And while we're on the topic of sex, brother, it's also very important to learn how to distinguish your natural sexual preferences from those that developed during your addiction. And this is quite challenging. This is something that, for at least for the brothers in our system, they do need to get on a call with me for. Once in a while, sometimes they have to ask in the group where the porn reboot intensive, for instance, we have brothers who've been off pornography and masturbation in many cases for multiple years. But this is one of those places where you want to ask some questions and you have guys who are experienced who can really guide you. That sort of a community is invaluable. So for instance, if you have certain things that arouse you sexually that you're not comfortable with, let's say you're attracted to certain people, it's confusing you and you don't have access to a group like ours, and you're just like, man, I'm not really sure of what my sexual preferences are. If you don't have access to a group like ours, I would highly recommend working with a sex therapist at this point, especially a sex therapist who understands pornography addiction and sexually compulsive disorders. Do not put yourself in front of a sex positive therapist who doesn't understand what porn-induced homosexual obsessive compulsive disorder is, who has no idea what porn-induced erectile dysfunction is, or worse still, does not believe in porn addiction because they're only going to confuse you. So the first criteria if you're going to work with a sex therapist is to find out if they understand sex addiction, right? So they are wonderful therapists who specialize in that. And if you're a brother who is listening to this and you are in our implementation program or you are in our intensive program and you're just like, oh, holy shit, JK, I didn't know that you offered this, but definitely reach out to us, reach out to Reboot Hero, reach out to me, reach out to one of our team members, and we'll see what we can do about pointing you in the right direction. We have a list and we've been building a list of therapists out there who are in tune with the Porn Reboot system. We send them a lot of referrals. And these are wonderful professionals who can help you in the latter stages of your reboot. Now, let's talk briefly about dating apps and dating sites. Now, we got to face it, okay? Like these days, dating happens mostly through the internet. You know, with the pandemic and COVID, almost everyone's dating online. So there are a few things to look out for. These are some really basic, let's just call them tips, okay? Because this is just a podcast episode. Happy to give more details within our groups, but Don't simply contact people based on their profile pictures, brothers. Like, read their profile and actually find out what this person is looking for. Now, I know that there are a lot of women out there who are just looking for hookups and they'll put their picture out there with no more information because they're sick and tired of the game. But my suggestion to you early on is just don't get catfished, don't get pulled into something that's crazy. And There are going to be opportunities for you to have casual sex. While there's nothing wrong with casual sex, you have to be very, very self-aware of your addict self and how you react to this. So let's say you're chatting with some woman online and you reach out to her and you're very direct. You're like, listen, I don't want to waste time. What are you looking for? And they say, honestly, I'm just looking to hook up right? And they find you attractive, whatever the case may be. There's nothing wrong with that, but I want you to be very self-aware. How do you feel, right? Journal how you feel, go through the process. And if you end up having an encounter with this person, it is, again, I'm not judging anybody here, 
But if you do end up, even though it is not my recommendation in the early stages of your reboot, all I ask is that number one, you seek some sort of intimacy first, which might actually just ruin that attempt to meet with that person because you're trying to seek intimacy. And second, and they're not really looking for quote unquote intimacy. There are a lot of female sex addicts out there and there are a lot of women out there who are medicating their own issues via hookup apps. And I'm gonna talk about actually female porn addiction in a couple of episodes in the future. But the first thing is seek some sort of intimacy, whether that is through a date initially don't be attached, even though they said they're looking for casual sex. Don't let that be the main criteria. You still have to go through the process and look for red flags. A lot of guys lose their shit when a woman finds them attractive and is down for sex. And your addict mind can quickly take over. It can take over with a strength that you haven't seen in months or in over a year, depending on how long you've been rebooting. So again, always be aware if you catch yourself on a dating site or on a dating app browsing for something sexual or something arousing, it's not a site or an app that you want to be on at this point in your reboot. I also highly recommend that you avoid sites which are geared towards infidelity or which are geared towards hooking up or which are geared towards specific fetishes until you have full control over your sexual behavior. Again, I know this goes without saying, but I've just seen a lot of guys get into fucked up situations, but just be aware that not everyone online is who they say they are. Some women might be escorts, some might be in relationships and you might get caught up in some drama. Some are straight up scammers trying to take advantage of you. So some basic rules when you're dating while rebooting is, first of all, and I know this might sound super weird to you, but if you ever feel that, especially as a man, if you ever feel that something is weird, then let somebody know that you're on a date. One of my great buddies, my best friend in California, he's a single guy, you know, he's in his mid thirties, very successful. He goes out on dates with women and the more successful he's gotten, just the more interesting the women that he's met because he's now meeting women in just different circumstances. I won't go into it, but on occasion, if he feels like something weird is happening or something's off, he'll literally just let me know like, hey man, I'm traveling and I'm in this state and I've been working here for like a couple of weeks. I'm meeting this woman, just wanted to drop her address with you in case. And I'll let you know, you know, if I leave her house the next morning, if we hook up, whatever that is. So he does do this. There's nothing wrong with it. He's a grown man. He's an amateur boxer. He's like six foot, 215 pounds or something. I mean, he can take care of himself, but at the same time, he's aware of things and he leaves a trail if he feels something is off. Again, if somebody also tells you to go straight to their home, nothing wrong with that. I've had plenty of hookups before I got into a relationship where I just went to the woman's house and what happened happened. I recommend meeting a woman in public first. Just make sure everything is cool. Is there anything else? Let me think if I have any other tips that I can drop. No, that's actually it for now, brothers. All right. <laughs> actually, I would like, I'm curious to hear if you have any questions, any further questions about dating during your reboot. Feel free to email me at jkemezi at elevatedrecovery.org. Again, I literally receive hundreds of emails a day sometimes. I do respond to the ones which are from the podcast. So in this case, all you got to do is in the subject line, just put dating during recovery. That's all you need to do. And my executive assistant, when she goes through it, she's just going to filter it out for me and I can hop in there and I can read it. Thanks for listening. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out of control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, 
If you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom. 